What's up everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at the brand new 2022 Land Rover Defender. Big shout out to HBI Auto for providing this car for today's video. Definitely take a look at their website, link down below. They have really sweet selection of pre-owned supercars and some nearly brand new cars just like this. And the model that we're looking at today is the 110 V8 Carpathian Edition, finished in Carpathian Gray, has factory satin paint protection film, and an original MSRP around $118,000. Underneath the hood, this Land Rover Defender packs a 5-liter supercharged 8-cylinder engine, cranking out 518 horsepower with 416 pound-feet of torque. It tops out at 149 miles per hour and can do 0-60 to 60 in 5.1 seconds. The engine is also paired to an 8-speed automatic transmission, sending the power to all four wheels. The curb weight is around 5,700 pounds, and running on a 19.8 gallon fuel tank, you can expect 14 miles per gallon in the city with 19 out on the highway. And the Defender can even tow 8,200 pounds. The overall length is 197.6 inches with wheelbase at 118.9. Height is 77.4 and width is 80 inches. The new Defender is an off-road focused vehicle. Approach angle is 37.5 degrees with breakover angle at 27.9. Ground clearance is around 11 and a half inches, departure angle is 40 degrees, and then water forwarding is even 35.4 inches. And then now moving on to the exterior styling with the new Land Rover Defender. This is a very unique looking SUV, off-road focused with a nice classy vibe. If we take a look at these headlights now, they have a square surrounding, however they're nearly a circle. And when you unlock them, you can see all the LEDs light up really cool square turn signals, and then the semicircle underneath the high beams and headlights. Very nice lines coming through this front bumper. We get the LED fog lights, a lot of openings down below to allow cooling to this massive V8. We get parking sensors in the corner of the front bumper, and then all this satin color right in the center of the grille. There's more parking sensors in the lower portion of the front bumper, as well as a forward facing camera right in the center. You can see the gloss black as well as the satin. Then you get your Land Rover badge with more openings up top. You get Defender written out on the hood, and it really does come together nicely to make this SUV stand out. I love how the bulges in the front fenders even flow their way into the front bumper. Very unique SUV. And then moving up top, you can see the gloss black in the center portion of the hood, and then this really cool diamond plated design on the farthest sides of the hood to mimic a step. This also has a set of 22 inch wheels in all four corners, finished in a five spoke and gloss black, and we get a massive set of six piston Brembo brake calipers up front, finished off in a really cool looking satin blue. The gloss black from the front bumper makes its way around these front and rear wheel arches. Then you can see the lower portion in the center of the side of the door. We get the V8 badge and more of the gloss black trim. On the front fender, we get a massive vent to allow heat to be pulled from the engine, and you get the Defender logo up top. There's a really sharp line cutting its way through the side profile, and then a set of gloss black mirror caps. There's an integrated camera in them, and then all gloss black trim around these windows. We get the gloss gray color on the side door handles, then you can see how the satin color makes its way to the rear wheels. And then a really unique feature of this Defender is this piece right here with the Land Rover badge. You can actually add on accessories. This is kind of in between the window, very unique touch. Up top, you're also gonna see the skylights within the roof for the third passengers, and then we get a panoramic sunroof up top. Moving to the full side profile, you can get a smaller wheelbase with full two doors instead of the full four door, but the four door has a really good wheelbase, really good proportion all around, and there's even a longer version than this available. But a really cool look, I love how boxy it is in the back, and yet you get those sleek lines. Moving to the back, you can see just how wide those rear fenders are, same with the front ones. And then that gloss black roof fades its way to the back, wrapping around with all the glass. We get a really cool design for these taillights. You can see how they light up. There's two extra squares on this far left side and then larger ones towards the center. You get the release handle for the swing gate and the name Defender written out. More gloss black trim and then the satin trim in the center. We get a dual quad tipped exhaust, parking sensors and tow hooks. And then the fifth full size spare tire is mounted on the back. The rear end certainly stands out and those taillights really bring it all together. So there's a good look at the exterior with this Carpathian Edition Land Rover Defender. Very unique specification inside and out, and the car's already super unique, so pretty cool to see this specific one. I love the satin color, it really stands out. So we have Land Rover's key fob, you get the name written on one side, and just your basic buttons. Keeping the car locked, I can just keep the key fob in my pocket. When I grab the door handle, I can press the button, 
It'll unlock it, we can check out this interior. This Defender gets a black interior, and you're gonna see black leather, vinyl, as well as micro suede slash Alcantara. Really cool interior. If we move our way to the door panel, some of the bodywork makes its way inside, and this is the color of the paint before it gets that satin PPF. You get this nice leather material up top, and then exposed rivets in the door panel. Again, this is an off-road, rugged focus vehicle, so Land Rover really wanted to emphasize that. You can see your memory seating, mirror controls, and all the window controls and lock and unlock. Nice grab handle with more of the comfortable leather with padding. We get a ton of storage down below, and then part of the speaker system. This has a Meridian audio system. Moving our way inside, we get that V8 badge, and then all the power controls on the left side of the seat. You can see all the black color, this really neat vinyl material, and then all the Alcantara right in the center. Get a cool stitching design. And then moving our way up, you can see the nice size bolsters, more stitching, good stitching around the headrests. Really cool interior, it certainly stands out. We had a full Alcantara steering wheel with leather on the airbag and the name Defender. And then now inside the Defender, keeping my foot on the brake, we can go ahead and fire it up. Taking a look at the gauge cluster now, this is a full LCD digital screen with your speedometer intact, and we also get a navigation screen coming up right in the center. If we take a look at the steering wheel now, we have these really cool touch sensitive buttons. If you tap this icon right over here, it goes to a home screen over on this screen in the center of the car. You can easily use those controls and back out of things and do that. We also have volume control. On the right side, we have all of your cruise control settings, lane keeping, and the heated steering wheel. Then we get a set of paddle shifters. They have a really nice look and feel. They're made out of metal. We have the turn signal stock on the left side. Then you also get the stock on the right for all the wiper blades. On the left side of the steering wheel, we have the electronic parking brake, and then a little bit of storage down below. You have some really cool leather and vinyl material running across the dashboard, heads up display, two air vents are up top, and a really cool design. This is like a handle up here. There's a huge area for even more storage on the passenger side. We have a USB port in there as well. And then if we move to this touchscreen display system, taking a look at the home screen now, you get a ton of different information that's gonna come up. Right now you can see media and phone. You can continue swiping over to see your slope assist with the pitch and roll. You have the compass, wheel information. We also have the weighting sensing for how much water you're driving through. Different things that impact the energy use. We have driving style. And then over on the right side, you can see a settings icon as well, where you can adjust some of the things within the screen. Then you also have this icon with all sorts of different information that'll come up, a towing mode, the vehicle dimensions, weather. So all sorts of things, navigation of course, really cool the way everything is laid out. And if I go ahead and put the car into reverse, your backup camera comes up over on the right side, and then we get the full top view on the left. If we tap the off-road icon, you can see our rear view. You can lock your differentials, so it's really cool how that is integrated within the camera system of different drive modes. And then if I go ahead and put the car back into park, it'll get out of that and go back to the home screen. Underneath the big screen, we have all of our climate controls and then some drive modes. You can see the defrost and recirc icons, AC, all sorts of things. When you tap this icon right here, it comes up on the screen for the different zones. You have front and rear, and then you can even see your suspension icon. You can raise and lower that, downhill assist, and then these two controls here, when you toggle them, it changes what you do. So now we have our fan speed that you can adjust, and you can tap this one. This is gonna go into your drive modes. So kind of neat how they integrate your fan speed, temperature controller into the different drive modes. So we have drive modes that'll come up through the center. You can see all sorts of different ones for off-roading, wading through water. And then you can see how everything comes up on the center screen here with different information. The ride height will adjust as you do certain things, then continue down into different modes you can see the cool depiction. And then if we take a look back in the center, you can exit out of that one. We also have traction control, a low range, and then your volume on off is over on the far right side. Moving to the center now, we get a huge space here. You can see how far down this goes, USB ports. You can access it from the left, right, and the center. More of those exposed rivets. And you get cup holders, wireless phone charging, then nice black leather along the armrest. If I grab this and open it up, this is a cooled glove box down here. So you can fit some cool items, which is pretty sweet to see. It even has a rubber gasket on the top. Then if we close that, the glove box over here is a pretty good space, really good size as you would expect. And then one last look at the interior. 
I think Land Rover did a cool job making the Defender something different. This is not supposed to be your typical luxurious vehicle. This is more rugged, has more rugged materials that you feel like you can actually kind of get dirty and not feel too bad about it. But very sweet interior. You can see those skylights from here as well. Full panoramic sunroof. Then all of your dome lights and controls up top with a sunglass holder and a frameless mirror. And then now moving to the rear seat space, if I grab the door handle and open up the door, the door panel has a very similar design like up front with the exposed rivets, and you can see how the window is designed all integrated with this square piece. You can see how this kind of is part of that piece as well. So it's a pretty large door, pretty neat the way it's all designed. Back here, you get all the same material. You get the smooth leather, the Alcantara, some stitching, and that vinyl material. This is a three row bench seat. In the center, you can of course pull this down. We get a nice armrest with two more cup holders. And then up in front, we have an area where you can add TVs. You even get storage on the back side of the front seats and then all of your climate controls. You get these similar type of dials that we saw up front, air vents as well, a ton of USB ports down below. If I go ahead and grab the handle up here, we can unlock this, flip these down, get it out of the way. And you can see this cool rugged material all the way leading into the rear cargo area. All right, so sitting now in the backseat of the Land Rover Defender. So this is a pretty well-sized SUV. I'm five foot 11. I have so much space in here and I love the skylights. That is so cool. I don't think there's any other cars aside from Land Rover that has a skylight. Really cool, accessible for the second row. And uh, that is definitely a neat touch, but plenty of headroom, of course, with the panoramic roof open, that's a great touch. Good armrest as well. Great visibility feeling back here. And then you can grab this. Uh, they don't recline, it doesn't look like. However, they're at a pretty good angle to where you, know, you can actually put the kids back here, put full grown adults back here, and make this a pretty useful SUV. And then moving to the cargo area, there's an electronic button on the back side of this handle. You can unlock it and open it up. This will swing out with a gas strut to assist it. Back here, you can see the name Defender. You get a grab handle on it as well as some storage. And you can see just how much space there is in the back of this SUV. Pretty good size, honestly, for not being the crazy biggest. Back here, you can see the inside of what those square pieces on the side look like. Definitely a very unique touch. There are air vents back here, which is a cool touch. I believe a third row vehicle is available on this. We have a suspension button as well to lower and raise it. Then you can see how it's pretty squared off in here with a ton of storage space and you even get climate control controls for in the back. So if you do maybe have your dog in here, this is a pretty pet friendly SUV. And of course you had those climate controls on the screen for the cargo space itself. So pretty neat to where you have that ability to give your dog some extra cold air. But you can see now with these folded nearly flat, they don't go quite flat though. You still get a lot of space in here and still plenty of space up in front of these seats. All right, so setting off now in the new Defender, this supercharged V8, that is a meaty engine option. You can get this thing all the way down to a four cylinder. So it's pretty sweet to see this one with the big boy under the hood. But first impressions when you're driving this, you are nice and high up, really good seating position, great visibility out the front. You have such a huge windshield. The mirrors are actually pretty well sized for not being actually big mirrors, but really comfortable. We're just in the normal comfort, the basic mode that it defaults to over your left and right shoulder. Visibility is actually really good. Of course, you can put those headrests down to get better over the right side. And I love seeing those skylights. That is just a cool little touch. But the build quality and everything you touch in here, this is a really nice place. Now this is pretty much the top of the line version, the most expensive option that you can get from the Defender. This starts around the $50,000 mark. So you can get a more basic one. It's gonna have more vinyls in it. You know, it's kind of like a nicer version of a Jeep. It's kind of that theme. You know, it's off-road focus, rugged. It's not a crazy luxury vehicle. But this one, of course, having the extra luxuries, it does feel like a really nice place to be in those big Brembos, I mean, you just touch them, it brings this heavy SUV down. And then drive mode, definitely very interesting the way it works. So then going into dynamic over into the manual mode, thing packs a nice punch. And it actually sounds pretty good. The exhaust pops and cracks just a little bit. But a really pleasant place, you know, it's comfortable and quiet, even in dynamic mode, it's never anything crazy abrupt. It still is a luxury vehicle at the end of the day. You know, when you take hard turns, pretty stable feeling. And then as far as using the technology, it's a little bit weird to get used to. This isn't like your typical vehicle, you know, the way everything is laid out, so it's a little bit different. But once you get used to it, pretty simple to use in here. 
you know, transmission is really quick as well. And with all the drivetrain modes for off-roading, of course, that's where this SUV really shines. This is an off-roader at the end of the day, so it is designed to hit the trails, you know, raise up the suspension and do things to where you're gonna be getting dirty, you know, use those cameras and everything. So the ride quality, it seems such like a solid SUV to where that's where this car is really gonna shine. And it feels like a pretty solid SUV. There's not really any loose ends. It feels pretty well built and solid feeling. <laughs> oh man, I can't imagine off-roading with this. That supercharged engine is really gonna give you a good amount of power to really spin those wheels and get through obstacles. And when you do get up to some speed, the engine, and that's just short shifting at 4,000 RPM. This thing packs a punch. Yeah, man, that is, <laughs> I don't really know what to say. That is really cool. This thing is a meaty SUV. So with that said though, let's tone it down automatic and go back to normal mode. Of course, I can't really do the off-road settings you know, out here. So my honest opinions with this, this is one of those SUVs that is like expensive and people aren't ever gonna take it off-roading. However, I think Range Rover actually, or I guess Land Rover, they did something a little bit different. They actually made it to where there are basic trim levels that aren't too crazy expensive. Still 50 to 60 grand for a more basic one is a good amount of money, but when you look at other SUVs that are in this segment, this size, they're all about that price point. So the fact that this gives you the luxury brand name, the very good off-road capabilities. I mean, Land Rover has been doing off-roading since the beginning of their history. You know, this is designed for off-roading and they know how to do it with all the technology it has, the way the ground clearance is set up and everything. So Land Rover really did give you a luxury option that is an off-roader. And I think buyers of this are actually gonna be hitting the trails. Maybe not this one being well over six figures. You know, I doubt this one's ever gonna see a trail. And most of the expensive versions of this, I highly doubt are gonna hit the trails. But if you get a more normal trim level, you know, even just the four cylinder with the steel wheels, I can see people taking those off road, just like a Toyota Land Cruiser. You know, you want that bigger SUV and yet you actually are gonna hit some trails. Maybe you live somewhere where there are good open trails to go through. It's not a crazy small vehicle, so the tighter you know, trails through the woods might be a little cumbersome for a vehicle like this, but if you live anywhere where there's a lot of open area, this is something that's gonna do a lot. And if you look at all the other luxury brand off-roaders, a Mercedes G-Wagon, nobody is taking that thing off-road. Like, not a single person will take that thing off-road and then even look at other expensive ones from luxury brands. So I think Land Rover kind of did it the best way to where they actually give you a more affordable version and then if you want to spec it out and be a luxury version of an off-roader, you can still get that in the Defender. So it's a cool idea, it's a cool concept the way they've done it and driving it, just a quick test drive in this, it's a really solid vehicle. I could see daily driving this, just using it for a family SUV. It really does seem to have a lot to offer so that is about it for the new Defender. Really sweet trim level, of course. Uh, crazy that it's got a factory PPF film that's satin. It's a really nice touch. Big shout out and thank you once again to HBI Auto for providing this SUV for today's video. Definitely check out their website linked down below. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.